Riddle me this, what's harder, catching smoke with your bare hands or sharing something great that hasn't already been said about Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban? To be honest, I had a hard time preparing for this video, as I worried my thoughts would be nothing new from what you've already heard, but then I decided to treat my thoughts and connections as if they are the only ones in existence. The following video is 100% my takeaways from Prisoner of Azkaban. I'm talking the good, the bad, and the ugly. He was that friend! Hey guys, my name is Nathan, welcome to Hail. This summer I am talking about every Harry Potter movie and how each movie connects to me. So last week's video was Chamber of Secrets, now we're talking about Prisoner of Azkaban. On June 4th, 2004, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban was released. The first summer release of a Harry Potter film. I can remember seeing a trailer for the first time and seeing Snape rather aggressively enter into the Defense Against the Dark Arts room and tell everyone to turn to page 394. It's also the first moment you realize that Draco Malfoy's slick back hair has gone extinct. In last week's video, I talked about how when it came to Chamber of Secrets, I found myself looking up the trailer many times, years even after the movie was released. I'm honestly guilty the same way for Prisoner of Azkaban. I love how in such a short trailer, we are able to see Buckbeak, Professor Lupin as a werewolf, Aunt Marge blow up, the Dementors, and still hear the iconic Harry Potter theme in it. When it came to actually sitting down in the theaters, watching it for the first time, I distinctly remember being sad when it came to the scene where Harry and Hermione are returning to the hospital wing after having saved Sirius Black and having gone back in time. But the reason I was sad is because I realized that this was the end of another Harry Potter movie and I would have to wait a whole nother year before seeing a new one. Prisoner of Azkaban stands out for several reasons. It was the first movie with a new director, Alfonso Cuaron, replacing Chris Columbus. But we also got new actors for the roles of Dumbledore and the Fat Lady. I remember initially not loving Michael Gambon as Dumbledore. I thought that he was a little bit too rough around the edges and it was just it took some getting used to for me but when I watch the movie today I, I can't see any other actor playing him at this time like I've just gotten used to Michael Gambon and so I don't mind it so much today I especially think it's so impressive that this movie holds up so well and that it's also considered one of the best Harry Potter films in the whole entire series because they recasted such a big crucial role another movie that comes to my mind when we're talking about recasting big roles is the Dark Knight and how that movie is still super good yet they recasted Rachel, with Maggie Gyllenhaal playing her in the second one. But while Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban takes on a much darker tone than Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets, it's honestly one of the funniest Harry Potters also. From the very beginning, when Vernon is walking in and out and trying to see if Harry is still awake and Harry hides under his blankets every time he walks in, or a few moments after Aunt Marge has blown up and you see Harry leaving the house and in the distance you can just hear Aunt Marge like screaming for help. Then there's Ron having nightmares about spiders telling him to tap dance. Or the scene when Sirius points to Ron and he's like, he's in this room and he's right here. And he's obviously he's talking about Peter Pettigrew, but Ron thinks he's talking about himself and he says, me, it's mental. It's just, it's, it's, I love Ron so much in this movie. Or even this back and forth between Hermione and Ron that you really have to kind of listen to to notice. Oh, that looks really painful. So painful. They, uh, they might chop it. Sure, Madame Ponce will fix it in a heartbeat. It's too late. It'll have to be chopped off. Prisoner of Azkaban also gets some brownie points for not having Voldemort as its central focus. Sirius Black's escape from Azkaban really is the main focus and it, it builds for an eerie and unsettling tone to the movie. It really is true to this movie's tagline, something wicked this way comes. I love this tagline so much for Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and it's a great tribute to Macbeth, one that I didn't even know was a tribute until I was in college and I had to read Macbeth. I love that we are led to believe that Sirius Black is that something wicked that is coming, but I don't don't think Sirius Black is executed perfectly in this movie. While Prisoner of Azkaban is a really good movie on so many levels, I am a little disappointed in some ways that they chose to portray on screen Sirius Black. Like for an example, in the book it describes Sirius Black's portrait in the Daily Prophet as this. A large photograph of a sunken faced man with long matted hair blinked slowly at Harry from the front page. And so in other words, Sirius Black is just a picture of him kind of blinking calmly at whoever's reading the paper. Whereas in the movie, they really do paint him as this psychotic killer that really did murder all those people that he's been rumored to have murdered. It really does make you believe that he is after Harry and I see what they're doing, but it contradicts itself. He's not a crazy person, especially if you've read the books. He's an innocent man that was 
charged unfairly to go to Azkaban when he was innocent all along. We'll put that right back there. Ding, ding. Also, when it comes to Quidditch, I find it a little strange that Harry Potter sees the Grimm, the black dog, in the clouds. Because in the book, it's portrayed a little differently. He doesn't see the dog in the clouds, but he sees the dog in the stands. And he takes that as, oh no, it's the Grimm following me again. When in reality, we find out in the end that Sirius Black just wanted to watch his godson play Quidditch. And so he came to a match as the dog. But it raises a few questions about the Grimm and really if the Grimm exists. The movie really points to the Grimm. Yes, it definitely does exist and danger is coming because when the Grimm happens, you keep seeing it again and again. It seems like the book takes more of the route of Harry wasn't seeing the Grimm as much as he was actually seeing Sirius Black himself as a dog. Whereas the movie kind of leads you to believe that the Grimm is a thing and Harry is seeing it. That's the only logical reason I can think of for him seeing it in the clouds, which differs a little bit from the book, but if that's what the movie is going for, it's not really a complaint. I guess this is more just of an observation. I can see why they didn't just have Sirius Black in the stands because it's a lot more exciting to see that huge image in the clouds of the Grimm, the black dog. I mean, I'll even admit, I love that shot in the movie. Now, there are a few continuity errors when it comes to Prisoner of Azkaban. For one, Harry Potter uses magic in the first two minutes, the scene I referenced earlier when Vernon is coming in and out to see if he's awake. He's using the Lumos Maximus spell, and I mean, magic isn't allowed outside of school, so we never really acknowledge that, that that's magic he's using right there. And then on top of that, the location of the Whomping Willow has completely changed from the second movie. In the second movie, it's way closer to the Hogwarts castle, and this movie, it's further away from the Hogwarts castle. I can see why they did that, because it makes more sense for this movie and for this storyline for it to be separated from the castle. So maybe it's more of a mistake on Chamber of Secrets? But at the end of the day, both of these complaints are really nitpicky, and I'm kind of just scraping at the bottom of the barrel right now and take all my complaints with a grain of salt because at the end of the day, I still love Prisoner of Azkaban. Something that's kind of cool is although the director changed on Prisoner of Azkaban, John Williams stayed with the film and he conducted the score for this movie. It seems like even with the score, the tone shifts quite a bit. The score in this movie definitely feels different from the first two movies with scores such as the apparition on the train or the werewolf scene. The track is literally called the werewolf scene. And speaking of the werewolf, how could I make a Harry Potter video devoted to the Prisoner of Azkaban without mentioning the werewolf scene? Any scene with Lupin as a werewolf, particularly the transformation scene is one of my favorite scenes of the whole entire Harry Potter franchise. The transformation scene is just pretentious warning. Absolute cinema. With the zoom in on Lupin's eye when he sees the full moon, to the transformation of the iris, to the zoom out and the transformation of the rest of his body. I love all of it. And the final look of the werewolf is beautiful to me. There are some people out there who actually don't like the look of the werewolf in this movie. And for me, myself, I love it. I think it's very unique. It looks different from any other werewolf I've seen in a movie. It's a very skinny, kind of long-legged dog almost, and I just think it's a unique look that was really refreshing. I remember even as a kid thinking the werewolf looked really cool. Really, I think this whole movie is great, but it's that point where Scabbers bites Ron right after they think they've seen Buckbeak executed, and Scabbers runs away, and then Sirius Black takes Ron. Everything after that point to me is just... 11 out of 10, this is, you know, why I love Harry Potter so much. You get a closer look at Sirius Black as the dog. You get the Whomping Willow versus Harry and Hermione, which side note, I absolutely love that scene. I loved it as a kid and I love it today. I've always loved the scene where Hermione grabs Harry's shirt and it takes him that second to look down and then he gets pulled away. It, it doesn't really make any sense logically, but the fact that they like have that in the movie and the fact that they like slow down time just to get that little comedic second in there, I, I think it's so funny. And then after them, versus the Whomping Willow, you find out that Sirius Black is innocent. Eventually, it leads to Lupin's transformation. You see the Dementors attack. You see Harry and Hermione go back in time. You see Harry perform the amazing Patronus. It's all just absolutely amazing. And I, I'm sorry, I keep saying the word amazing, but that's, that's the word I gotta use when it comes to Prisoner of Azkaban, man. It's honestly just a really good movie and a really good adaptation. Like, I've shared my complaints with the book to movie, but I am nowhere near saying that this is a bad adaptation. I've seen bad adaptations, and trust me, this one is a great adaptation. And of course, in these videos, I love incorporating what's nostalgic to me, what kind of stands out. I touched on the theater experience a little bit and watching the trailer as a kid, watching the trailer in the coming years, but some side notes, some things that were nostalgic for me, the DVD game. I mean, I played these DVD games all the time. I mentioned it with Chamber of Secrets. In Prisoner of Azkaban, there was a DVD game where it was something about Sir Kadagan's night quest. I can't remember what the point of it was, but 
you were you were following the knight from portrait to portrait around Hogwarts, and you were helping him with something, some sort of quest he was going on. No idea what it was. I cannot remember. But I also loved playing the video game, just like I loved playing the Chamber of Secrets video game. Like in the Prisoner of Azkaban video game, it was still one player. But the cool thing was you could switch between which character you wanted to be. So if you didn't want to be Harry, you could press like a certain button and change to Ron or change to Hermione. And so there's a certain part of Hogwarts where there's like a jail cell in a certain room. And so what we would do is we would switch our character to Hermione, walk into the jail cell, have it closed, and then switch to Harry and run away from her so that she's trapped in the jail cell and she can't follow us anymore. But because it's a video game, right when you enter into a new room, she's like right there with you. It's actually quite scary. And so we'd run away as fast as we could from her and run around the Hogwarts grounds and then like zoom out on our camera and see her in the distance just like chasing us. I don't know why, but we made Hermione out to be this huge creep when it came to the video game. Love her in the movies, love her in the books, but when it comes to the video games, Hermione's a creep. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban really is one of the best of the franchises and one of my favorite movies of all the series. Thank you guys so much for watching another video as I speak about how much I love Harry Potter. What are your thoughts on Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, your experiences, your favorite scenes, the reasons why you love it? This movie gets a lot of praise, but I feel like the most common things we hear about it is there are some really beautiful shots and Alfonso Cuaron has some great cinematography but kind of looking past that what other reasons do you love this movie so much i appreciate you for watching and i'll see you next week when i talk about the goblet of fire